laksa, sambal, chili crab. The flavors of Singapore on the streets of New York City. So not exactly a hawker center, but this pop-up event is actually providing familiar favorites like popia and Milo dinosaur for New Yorkers. And it's a perfect day to enjoy it outside. Oh, I have so much to say and I just cannot be there. This was just one element of the Manhattan leg of Singapore Inside Out, a year-long traveling artistic showcase that lets visitors experience the creative side of Singapore. I got a chance to decorate this pop-up room with artist Speak Cryptic, walk through interactive installations, and eat bakwa and kaffir lime oh caramel gosh, lollipops crafted by chef Janice Wong. Culinary creativity was a big theme with event partner The Daily Meal hosting this test kitchen where top New York chef Michael White cooked alongside Singaporean chefs Justin Quek and Wayne Liu and heritage hawker advocate KF Sito. On the menu, hawker classics like coffee pork ribs and chili crab, mod sin dishes like fresh seafood and black pepper steak, and Chef White's Singapore-inspired chili crab fried rice. Chefs in more than 20 restaurants across the city took part in a first-of-its-kind Singapore Restaurant Week. For breakfast, I stopped by Cobra Cafe for its take on Kaya Toast and this beverage, a hybrid of kopi and the Singapore Sling. Now this is the uh, coconut jam that they have here. And they toasted it, we saw the guy make that. Mm. Crispy, sweet, buttery, exactly has, we remember it. I'm missing a little bit of the soft boiled eggs that we like to dip in Singapore, but this is a New York style, so I'm gonna have that. And of course, the coffee cocktail. Let's give a sip. Wow. So you can definitely get the gin, the pineapple, the orange, those flavors that you know with the Singapore Sling, but it has that super kick of coffee, which, you know, how can you go wrong with a coffee cocktail? Great way to wake up. Over at the Clam, I sample Chef Joey Campanaro's take on chili crab. He makes the sauce with garlic, ginger, seafood stock, tomato paste, white wine, and sriracha hot sauce. Then he adds pickled chili peppers and snow crab. The sauce is saltier and thinner than the Singaporean version, clearly made for a Western palate. And then it's off to the meatball shop for a modern take on chicken rice. Okay, so I have the meatball. You can see it's uh, minced chicken with jasmine rice. I'm gonna dip it a little bit. I'm missing kind of the dark soy that comes with it, but that's okay. Pretty good flavor. Reminiscent of our chicken rice. And they serve it with this um, spicy cucumber sauce. So I'm guessing it's a play on the sliced cucumbers we have with it. Even burger icon Shake Shack got into the SG50 spirit. What we decided to do was take a cheeseburger and then make a very special sauce with the sambal, with a little bit of lime juice. And then the best part of it, we take onions, marinate them in sambal, then we bread them and fry them so they're crunchy and crisp. We put that on top of the cheeseburger. It's juicy, it's crunchy, it's got a little sharpness from that sambal, a little sweetness from the onions. In the end, it's just pure comfort. The burger did have a sweet and spicy kick reminiscent of sambal, but the onde onde shake was trickier to master. They tried to get the coconut in there and the gula malaka, the caramelly taste. I'm missing a little bit of the pandan flavor, but it's still a pretty good shake. I applaud New York eateries for embracing the Singaporean spirit, but of course, the most authentic meals came from homegrown chefs. Chef Lee Bun Seng of Oja in Sentosa was the guest chef at Bergdorf Goodman were his high-end takes on Singaporean classics won over diners. 
So I'm here at Bergdorf Goodman Restaurant trying their Singaporean menu. I'm super excited because it looks pretty authentic. This is their version of bakute. It's using some premium pork belly. And this is lobster laksa. And of course, laksa with lobster. How can you get any better than that? And this is Yusheng, the popular Lunar New Year dish we're used to doing. I feel like I should have chopsticks and say, wada, wada. <laughs> I felt like you stayed true to the flavors, but you did cater to the Western palate, because yeah. they're not as strong. Right. I, I felt like they were a little bit lighter. Yeah. Yeah. So is that what you were going for? Yeah, like Lhasa, I, I don't do too spicy for them. We don't put sambal inside them. So it's more to suit to the New Yorker palate. And New Yorkers need not fret if they missed Singapore Restaurant Week because the demand for Southeast Asian food has led to more eateries like Laut popping up. At Chomp Chomp Restaurant, the menu is a showcase of Singaporean hawker favorites like Char Kway Tiao and Fried Hokkien Mee. Chinese Malaysian chef owner Simpson Wong has been serving Southeast Asian cuisine in New York for nearly 20 years. The, the craze is about Singaporean and other street food around the world, you know. So I think that, you know, even 10 years ago, people wouldn't know what is Singaporean food. But these days, you know, I put it on the menu and people just, they inhaled it like right away, you know, there's no questions, you know. They said not spicy enough and not strong enough sometimes, you know, so they always ask for extra spicy. Food, art, music. It's a tale of two cities brought together in a unique exhibition. And while Singapore Inside Out may be over, the event left a good taste in the mouth and hearts of New Yorkers.